Hi, I'm Mad Micro Sharp Pointy Things. Today we're going to look at some various bayonets that fit the AR-15 M16 series of rifles. There's quite a few of these. There's more than I can display here, but we'll try and follow up at some point. Okay. Now there's also a variety of aftermarket bayonets that will fit. There's a Smith & Wesson. It's Chinese made. The materials and thickness seem okay, but not necessarily great. I haven't tried using one, so I can't give you a details on how effective it is. There's a knockoff of that imported by various importers, uh, probably from the same factory or similar. Some of those fit just fine, but I've also had some show up for sale that actually the, either the ring was too tight or the mount was incorrect and they would not actually mount. And then you'll find some really, really cheap ones by a certain mass market cutlery house that don't even pretend to fit. Uh, they're strictly for show. They're frankly rather silly. There's also a dimensionally correct copy of the M7, but it's definitely inferior materials. There's lots of bayonets out there that will fit the AR series. Uh, I've done lots of custom ones, other makers have. Now, the, the, you pretty much have a, a uh, buffet of choices when it comes to that. So this is the M7 bayonet in an M8 scabbard. There is also an M10 scabbard that is all plastic. This has been in use since Vietnam. One of the interesting features is the grip was actually a continuation from those used on the M4 bayonet, so there's actually a slight gap at either end. It doesn't affect function, uh, it, it is cosmetic, but they all have that to some degree or another, depending slightly on the contract. These are an okay bayonet. The, the problem is you have a very narrow bevel. You can't get a really good edge on it. it it's nice and pointy and sticky, but that's about it. Um, they're also used for probing for mines when you're crawling, other things. You'll find some with broken tips. Uh, a couple of things happen there. One is bored troops throwing them at trees, which is not what bayonets are made for or balanced for. And sometimes the tips break off. Uh, there's also uh, apparently a recurring myth in the military that you can't send something to DRMO, Defense Reutilization Marketing Office, unless it has been demilitarized or made unserviceable. Um, I've heard of a unit where the NCYC had all the troops pull out their knives and start slashing the canvas of the tents so that they would be unserviceable when they went to be uh, resold as surplus. So of course people bought them at scrap prices rather than at used tent prices because they were all damaged. It's not actually true if something is out of service, no longer needed. It, if it's still functional, it can be sold as is, but this is one of those myths in the military that persists. Now, this was in use for a good long time and uh, was eventually replaced with a couple of others. About that same time, this is a Stoner 63 weapon system bayonet. Now, the Stoner 63 was used by the SEALs in Vietnam. And the bayonet will actually fit on an AR-15. It has the serrated back similar to the AK-47 bayonet, and it has the wire cutter option for cutting barbed wire or cables or otherwise. Uh, one of the other things to notice about this is that it has a very narrow bevel. This was copied very much from some of the AK bayonets. This is okay for sticking people. It's not particularly good as a field knife. You have very little edge to work with there. This is good for cutting rope or otherwise, but it's not an effective saw. It's got a spanner attached handle, a compatible mount, same size ring, and a very sturdy scabbard. At some point during Vietnam, a unit probably either Fort Campbell or Fort Knox deployed to Vietnam contacted a local machine shop and had them cast aluminum, I think originally they did some brass and then they switched to aluminum handles that fasten on and turn it into a knuckle duster. There's a lot of debate over whether that's an effective way to use a knife or not but they had these made up. This was not an official contract. There's no documentation uh, through DOD for it. 
but there was one unit who paid out of either unit funds or pocket to have a bunch of these made, and they are still being made by several sources. Uh, I'll put one down in the details below so that you can find these if you'd like one. Now, I don't have a Frobis bayonet, which was the M9, which was the initial replacement for that, but this is the USMC's current bayonet, which is basically a K-bar with a bayonet fitting. This is a really good piece of hardware. It's durable. It's an effective size for a knife. It's got a good bevel for a cutting edge. This does a lot of the things you need to do. It's a knife. It's a bayonet. It serves both purposes. <coughs> it's very sturdy. Now, after I had seen these, <coughs> I, of course, had an idea. And I realized that I needed a knuckle duster K-bar bayonet. It's nice to have options when you need to ruin someone's day. You want to beat them, stick them, or stick them at a distance. This is a actual K-bar blade, custom-made ring, although I've seen others. <clears throat> and then I went ahead and stuck the, the knuckle duster on it. It just seemed so over the top I had to have one. <clears throat> it's one of those things you do when you're bored. Now, many years ago, my wife at the time and I were both pending deployment uh, schedules changed, we did not deploy at the same time, but I wanted us both to have something more effective than just the M7, and it was getting hard to get bayonets, as everybody was buying them up in case they deployed. So this, M7 mount, I went ahead and did some welding and fitting, and this is a Tonto blade, 10 inches long, out of 5160 spring steel. <clears throat> Very durable. Never got to use it, but it's thick, it's substantial, gives a little more reach and a authoritative uh, impact. And this is a reused, oh, it's left-handed, this is a reused M10 scabbard where I used a wrap of plastic to make the fitting for the knife itself. <clears throat> so at some point I decided to go way over the top. <clears throat> this was a Swiss Pioneers bayonet. These were 1914. They were issued to engineers, drivers, drivers, and corporals as a field tool. This is an actual cross-cut saw, and because of the fuller and the bevel of the blade, it actually has relief. A saw has relief above the, the plane, and this does. That is a very effective saw. It has this percussion bulb for chopping. These were used for digging positions, cutting through downed brush, <coughs> Anything you might do while being in an engineering mode. I fabricated a guard. I have to find some black hardware to replace this. But this does fit on an M16 or AR-15. The immediate joke, of course, was that I have doubled the effective range of the M16. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the M16 platform, but those jokes are always out there, ready to be made. And someone immediately made one. Um, you know, the saw teeth cut forward, which hinders it going in and makes it more painful. Someone came up with uh, that observation, although, again, this is intended to be a tool rather than that part of being a weapon. <clears throat> uh, there's a <clears throat> another persistent myth that these violate the Geneva Convention. It would actually be the Hague Convention. In World War I, <clears throat> multiple parties had these uh, saw teeth on bayonets, including the Germans. Now, that is completely untrue. <clears throat> I'm going to note that the <clears throat> these were a scarce bayonet, the original. The handle was damaged and not recoverable, which is why I cut this one up. I did not cut up an actual valuable artifact in order to make this custom piece. So bayonets were much less used than they used to be, although there was a bayonet charge in Iraq in 2003 by a British unit. It's still sometimes useful to have a pointy thing on the end of uh, your, your rifle. One, so someone can't grab it. Two, for probing at potential threats, sticking through doors, things like that. Uh, a lot of modern rifles won't actually take one, they don't have the mount anymore, but it's not a completely obsolete idea, it still has some validity. Uh, you, there's a whole bunch of choices, as I've said, you can find anything you like, it can also be custom made, and if you want to st stick something on the end of your rifle, there's ways to do it. So you know the drill below, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, so we can do more of these videos. Uh, the website is Sharp Pointy Things. Uh, it's largely custom stuff and vintage stuff. It varies from time to time, but these videos are meant to be informative. Thank you very much.